Okay, I'm just gonna do a little short video, just kind of go over some of the G3X uh, panel information. Not too long, I don't wanna run my battery down, I don't wanna hook the power up. So anyway, unscripted and just flying by the seat of my pants. So anyway, again, we talked about in an earlier video, I talked about the IBBS battery, uh, battery switch. And when you turn this IBBS switch on, it's going to turn the G3X on. And that is strictly running off of the backup battery in this right panel and uh, not draining uh, the ba main battery at all, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so once we turn the master switch on, uh, it will actually then run off of the master, the main battery, and then it will charge the IBBS battery only if the master switch is on, okay? And only also if the IBBS circuit breaker is in. This circuit breaker does not control power from the IBBS battery to the G3X. It only controls the circuit that allows the backup battery, the IBBS battery, to charge when the master switch is on. So if you pull that, it's only gonna pull the charging capability. You'll always have power to the uh, G3X. Everybody knows this is a, a SD card. If you put that in and have enabled data logging, it will log every flight in detail and you can download that, throw it into an Excel spreadsheet and analyze all the parameters that it's measuring, which is a lot. It's also good for diagnostics. Now you can if, uh, send a man to the uh, Savvy Flight. That's pretty good with Mike Bush. And uh, these, uh, we actually have, you know, the push buttons on the G3X, which you can use if you like for certain things. My, the way I do it, this is the 307 um, Autopilot head. So what that does is that's letting us put the uh, controls here in front of us instead of doing it through the G3X. It can they make a remote version and you can control all that through the G3X. It's just probably a little quicker and easier just to go bam over here. Over here also is the uh, radio, the comm radio. It's a head for that. It can also be fully uh, remote and it is controllable through the, re the G3X as well. I don't really use this very much to tell you the truth. So I could probably uh, do away with that and just go remote. We can see I've been painting orange paint today. Um, but I do like the, I do like the autopilot head here. You got the magic blue button. Uh, but I could go, go remote with that. That's not a big deal there. Um, so I'll flip it on. So if you want to flip it on again, the IBBS battery, when you're doing it, you're only going to run it off of the backup battery. And I don't know, I'll, I've never ran it dead. I know they, I think they say 30 minutes or something, but it's probably longer than that. Now I'm going to tell you, you see here, it says it's powering up. I'm going to turn it back off because I want to show you something. There's a, there's parts of the configuration menu with the G3X that you can access anytime, even while flying. Uh, you can turn the, the, you can turn the master switch off and IBBS switch and kill all this while you're flying. It won't affect anything. You can turn it back on. It'll reboot. If you go into the menu while it's on and you're flying, running the engine, it will always leave a window with the engine information and so forth. Excuse me, excuse me, so forth over here open. So you'll always have that information even when you uh, go to menu items. But the main configuration menu is we're going to turn it on while holding the menu button. Just hold it on, keep it depressed until you see it come up on the screen uh, entering configuration mode. There you go, see? Now you can release the button. So it says configuration mode. This is kind of the main configuration area. And you see, even while I'm in it, it's still showing in engine information over here. So across here, you've got all the different things you can go to. System information, you just touch the button. Don't worry, you can't change anything. You have to save it. So if you go pushing buttons, you have to go to the end and save it. So you can play with it. This is kind of showing you all your devices over here. Green checks means everything's talking. You see, these are X'd out right now. It's because I don't have the avionics switch. There's no power to it. But if I flip those on in the master switch, it would work. In any case, I'm not going to go through all those. I just wanted to show you where it was. You can always hit the back button and go back. Here we've got system 
uh, options, configuration files, LRU, and so forth, Adahars, magnetometer. A lot of these things, if you built the airplane, you've already gone through these. Uh, in my forum post, I go through the details of after loading the file that comes with the, in the Dropbox, there's actually a G3X file that you can put in here and then load and it pre-configures most of this, but there's still quite a, a bit of things you have to do yourself. Angle of attack is here, autopilot, flight director. So there's all kinds of options. Aircraft is here. You can touch on it and see there's certain aircraft you can put in your actual identifier and then what it is, fuel type and so forth. Then go back. <clears throat> uh, you go all the way down and go through all the things, the sound, options 232 is kind of an important thing. That's, that's how everything talks to each other, the different ports. And again, I just refer you back over to my information or cup crafters to see what you should be putting them in there. Engine and airframe, so forth. At the end, see, this is where if you made changes you want to keep, you hit save and reboot. It'll ask you if you want to save it and reboot it. And you go, yeah, and it will. It'll, it'll save everything and reboot, reboot it back up. So you can go in here and play with stuff and don't worry about messing anything up. So if we go in here and uh, let's look at autopilot, for example, you'll see that, um, and there's other areas first, you have to say like, if you want, what do you have? Do you have the roll and the pitch servos in there? So we've said yes, obviously, so they're here. So in general, the control wheel steering enabled. I talked about that in the other video. That's this button here, the hit it, just press it, it disconnects the autopilot, press it and hold it. And then if you're on a heading, following, tracking a heading that you put in, as opposed to navigating on a course you've got, then when you press and hold that, when you turn, push it over and, and change it, then it will actually let the airplane go. And when you release it, you know, it, it releases the autopilot, but only temporarily while you're holding the button. And then you let go, it re-engages automatically and, and assumes a heading that you're, that you're currently on. So it's kind of a way you can just change your heading a little bit without you having to even touch this. <clears throat> uh, and that's just some options engage it via the, the input, the control wheel steering, that's CWS input, and all the pile engagement limits, I've got it disabled. You can go in there and actually make this thing uh, automatically engage if you do uh, certain things. If you enable it, then you can go back and say, if it gets below this speed or greater than this pitch or, or roll uh, degrees to engage the autopilot. You can click on any of these tabs like that. Now I'll explain to you. Here you got roll, servo, max torque. This is my setting, works good at 50%. Roll serving gain is 1.5. The direction is normal. And the roll servo clutch monitor is engaged. So I'll tell you a little bit about what each of these means. The torque, and when you set this up originally on the ground, there's some tests you do on the ground which make sure everything's moving in the right direction. For example, when we go to pitch, you're going to see for, for the pitch, which is controlling the elevator, that actually has to be put into reverse because the way the servo is mounted uh, on the uh, torque tube that makes it do that. So if you if you don't put that, if that's not put in reverse, then the, the, the stick will do, the servo will do the opposite of what the G3X is telling it. It's saying go up, it's going to go down. So that's one of the settings. But uh, torque, you're going to set it. So you're going to set it so that it still works. You know, it's, it's less, torque is how hard that servo is going to engage. You know, it's, not, it's only going to work so hard. And you don't want it overworking it over, over too much, just enough to where it controls it. If you find that it's trying to go somewhere and it won't, and basically it's just like slipping, slipping clutch. So that's the torque. You want the torque just enough to where you make sure you're getting firm, moving, everything's happening, and it's actually moving. If you find your stick starts to move and stops, you probably don't have enough torque on it. Torque it down where it's basically holding it tighter but at the same time you want to make sure always make sure you can overpower the servo which to tell you the truth at about any torque setting you can do there's not it's never going to say you can't you know take over you almost always can but you can make it where it's pretty easy so that's the torque so you can see mine's working at 50 percent a lot of that depends on how stiff your torque tube is and things like that so it'll it will be a little individualistic towards each aircraft the pitch servo gain. Gain is something 
that means how fast do you want it to do something? Do you want it to be very reactive? And so you see, I've got the gain on the pitch at 0 0.50 on the roll. Uh, I've got it 1.5. Okay. So what that means is you're flying along and you know, you get a little gust of wind or something like this. And you know, this wing rises. Do you want it to immediately correct? Or do you want to kind of, okay, let it roll a little bit and then bring it back in. And you know, let's, if you have a very high gain, the stick is going to give you bruises on the inside of your legs because it's going to go bam, 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 bam. Every little pitch change is going to throw that stick quick because it thinks you want to quickly keep it on course. So, so it will. It'll quickly grab it. So you just find something that you're comfortable with. You find it's getting too lazy and kind of doing this and we want too far off. And then it kind of comes back like this. You want it just a little bit crisper. Just increase the gain. This can be done on the fly while you're flying the airplane quite easily. And you just go into the menu while you're actively flying the plane and have it on. <clears throat> so, so that's what, what that is. There's a, um, there's a, on the pitch, there's a couple of other things and this is the normal torque and this is the normal gain. Uh, the direction is reversed monitors done. You can have a minimum airspeed, maximum airspeed. Vertical speed gain. Now, what that means, the vertical speed gain means, um, is it is it when you're when you're holding an altitude, which is what this is doing. This is your pitch. So when you're holding an altitude or or attitude, then if it you know how quick do you want it uh, to engage uh, to that, and um, how quickly do you want it to do it? In other words. Do you want, if it drops, you know, 10 or 20 feet below, if you're supposed to hold it 3,000 feet, it starts going down. Do you want it to quickly grab it and bring it back up? Uh, or do you want it to just kind of let it, you know, go along and not do the same, not move so often? You can see I got 1.5 on mine. Vertical acceleration gain. Is it, do you find it that you set the altitude and you say go to 3,000? And as it's climbing the 3,000, it kind of starts to roll out right before 3,000, overshoots 3,000, cracks and comes back down, and then maybe overshoots and then goes like this and kind of finds it. That's what that is, vertical speed gain. And so you, if you want it to be a little more accurate, you know, it'll, it'll actually be a little better to get there and to the point. So you can kind of keep that, you know, pretty quick. Uh, that, that helps it. And airspeed gain is if you told it to climb by airspeed instead of feet, that would control that. So that kind of tells you a little bit about the autopilot. But any, in any case, there's, uh, uh, things like the weight and balance. You can go in there and you can actually, I've input my actual weights and balance for this airplane. This airplane seat is 1129 pounds. That's where I can change it. But this will actually bring it up on the main menu. So all you've got to do is go plug in the numbers because it already knows what your empty weight uh, is in your arm and so forth. So, so you've got fuel, see there, pilot, uh, plus 71.4 co-pilot. So, so this is setting the arms and so forth in here. And uh, then that way, when you go into the actual program, you can just go, Pilot like me, 210 pounds. Co-pilot, you know, 150 pounds. Forward baggage so much, and, and it'll put, it'll show you in the whether you're in the envelope or not. In this plane, you're almost always uh, in the envelope. So you can go back again, and let's look what else we have got. There's just stuff you can go play with. It. Look at the display and see, you know, what? Do you, how do you want the display to mode and what kind of pointers, you know, and that kind of stuff. You can make it old steam gauge look or whatever. Uh, backlight, I always just leave it on automatic the way it comes. The sound, you can set your alerts volume, message volume, and you can test them. You can actually go here with your headsets on and listen to how loud the message volume is. You can turn it up or down. And terrain audio, traffic audio, so forth. AOA alert. It is enabled. Yeah, that's so when your angle of attack on your pedo, you know, comes up, it'll, how loud do you want it? Uh, and so forth. I'm not going to go through all these, but I'm just going to show you that that's where this information uh, all is. And uh, engine and airframe is there. And this is where most of your things will be set up, like what kind of uh, uh, sensors and so forth do you have installed? Again, this should mostly have come. Uh, you know, when the plane was finished, it'll it'll have the file that'll do that, the GEA uh, settings, and so forth. 
save and reboot. Okay. So anyway, this is the main menu that you can go into and make kind of main changes. There's a lot of things in here that you can't change on the fly, but a lot that you can. So I'm just going to go back and um, turn it back off. And I'm just going to let it boot up normal. So this time it'll boot up normal and uh, any changes that you made would, would be there. To do updates is pretty simple. You're just gonna, you have, you have your SD card on your computer at home. You should have an account through flygarmin.com and uh, it'll keep track of your uh, updates and when you need to load them, you take, I just keep one card at home and I do my data uh, updates on that card. I bring it in here. All you do is stick the card in here and turn it on. It'll see that there's updates on this card. It'll open up like this. And then instead of showing you everything and when they expire, it'll come up and say, do you want, you, there are updates. Do you want to update it? You say, yeah, you say yes, and it'll go through and grab the updates and automatically update it. This does uh, sometimes take a long time if, if, if big databases are being uh, done. So I usually always do it with the IBBS switch on. Um, it won't actually make a lot of the updates through the system. This will actually update everything that's in your system, your servos, your radio, uh, transponders. I mean, everything will be updated automatically. So, but it won't do it until you turn the master on, which is fine. It'll do it later if you're not gonna fly today or whatever. And uh, so we can continue once we've got that set up. You saw it took a few minutes for the Atahars to calibrate. And um, let me show you if you, the menu button here will do different things depending on, you know, where you're at, what screen you're on. So, uh, and these are X'd out because I don't have the master switch or the avionics right now. I don't want to run my battery down. But when you turn those on, those would all come on. And I'll do it just for a minute just to show you. So I turned the master and the avionics on. Here comes the comm radio uh, up. And you'll see up here in the corner, here came uh, the comm radio up and standby is there. And uh, <clears throat> transponder, this is a, you can configure these buttons to be wherever you want, right side, left side, middle. You can even go up here in, in, in the menu tell it what do you want to show you up here it's pretty cool it'll show you uh the wind direction that's at your destination and it extrapolates it from different data weather data it's receiving from the closest places i like fuel over destination remaining fuel uh distance you know to the next waypoint or to my destination time and route uh estimated time of arrival those are kind of my main things i like to have right in front of me <laughs> you can find that information out anytime the transponder, if you need to ident, you can just push that button. If you want to change the codes, you just click on it, and then you can enter your transponder code that you want to uh, en enter there. If you, the radio, it's the same as here. So on the radio, you've got a comm and a standby, obviously. Uh, comm is what's active, and it's even going to tell you right now it's 2K9, which is a con contact approach frequency. So that's actually our uncontrolled airport here on Unicom, so 122.9. So it's looking, saying that's where you're looking at. If I want to swap these and go to 119.95, which was uh, Denton, Texas Tower, where I last, I last had it on there, you just hit it and it would swap them. And now make this the active and that's the backup. You could then go in here to the backup and change it to whatever frequency you want to, okay? Uh, if you want to do it that way, if you know the frequency you want to go to, cancel it and go back. So that's how you can flip flop. If you use, want to go over to the head instead of pushing it there, uh, then you can do the same thing here. This flip flops it, see, and reverses it right here. And there's not much that I really do, you know, with that. Uh, you can monitor, which is kind of kind of fun sometimes if you're uh, on the tower frequency and you want to uh, listen to have the emergency frequency over here, and you want to listen, monitor it while you're flying. You can just press that. You can see there, monitor came up on there and then over on here, monitor came by the standby, M-O-N. That means we're monitoring that frequency. So we're not talking, if we press the push to talk, it's not gonna let us talk, but we are, are monitoring it. So it's just that easy, just press the, the monitor button, you know, there. You can also change frequencies here, see, like this, which is changing it there as I do it, see? And, uh, and you can control the volume you know, here if you want to. And then there's a menu that you can go into, which 
I've never had to change, but once it was just on kind of a weird thing that I had to change. <clears throat> but um, anyway, one of the things I use here is an audio button. And what I do there is I open it up. You can see here, we've got things like Pilot Isolate. You know, do you want to, whatever's coming in on the audio, like my XM, Sirius XM radio I'm listening to, or whatever, I can just click that button and it'll do it. If I want to listen to my music, so for example, I do have the SXM in here, I can, I don't want to listen to the music when I'm landing, taking off or whatever, if I'm busy, so I can just quickly push the audio, hit that, turn the music off, or I can hit it again, turn the music on, and I can control the music from this volume here. This is your effects, you know, uh, you want more bass, medium, whatever, and you got more options there. So that's a quick way just to, you know, turn your, turn your music and your audio and stuff if you want to change it around. Music's what I primarily do it with. So that's through this audio button here. Quick, quick and easy. The uh, screen, you can configure this screen. You can put this on the left side, right side, or whatever. It's just up to you. And, um, you know, if you press on the map, for example, the GPS, then of course you can go uh, into and screw, go into it or out to it with, with, I like to use the dial. That's quick and easy, or you can just do it just like everything else. We can pinch and go back in or whatever, it, whichever way is easier. But a lot of times flying, that's why Garmin did this, put buttons and knobs, because if it's easier to do that while you're flying, sometimes it is. And they made this bezel so it's amazing. So you can put your hands, if it's, you know, if you got a little turbulence or whatever, you can put your hand there and make selections a little easier from the tops and the bottoms if you, if you need to have a little more support. What's kind of cool is when you get on the map, you know, you can look at an airport. And I'm at Haskell, Oklahoma, 2K9. But anywhere on the map, you can click... And for example, there it says 2K9 Haskell, yep. And it tells me the elevation of the airport. And down here, it brought this up with the other information. 588, the latitude longitude. And I can click on that. It actually brings up me all the information about that airport. Okay, so at the info, it tells me it's Haskell, it's a public airport, uh, Avgas, blah, 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 blah. I can go over here on the info, then I can go to frequency so i can use this and go down or i can touch it whichever and there's the frequency now if i want to use that frequency i can just click it and if you watch it'll put it in there so you can put it right there so that's kind of cool you go to a, a airport that's got a atis uh you know tower ground whatever you just go you just go over to it and pop it in and it preloads it into the to the computer then you when you're ready you can just flip it back over you know, like that. It'll have things like the runway information, what's the traffic, what does it look like, and so forth, and uh, all the other weather. If you're if you've got ADSB, you can get the ADSB weather or Sirius XM weather if you want. Notams, AOPA information, etc. And the same thing here. You just click back, and you can go back to that next screen before, or go back to that screen. You can scroll the screen around to look over here, scroll it in or out or whatever. Okay. Here's all the towers and you can see they're showing, you can say how far away do you want them to start showing up? In other words, I'll say like if they're 200 feet, if I'm 200 feet or 500 feet above an obstacle, I don't even want to see it on the map. It'll take it off or so far horizontally or whatever. So only when you get close enough to within the parameters that you set, will it start doing that plus it'll start giving you warnings if you fly into those areas you can you can see a lot of other stuff that you can do but you can click anywhere on the map and it'll give you the latitude and longitude of it of it how far it is if you want to see how far is it to there i can click on it, it tells me it's five five miles uh right there this right here will says like back has put me back where i was at with the airplane in the center okay down here at the bottom then you'll see there's other menu items like this says map well, I can use the big one here, and I can go over to chart. If you want to use the charts instead of the VFR map, waypoint information, okay? And that can be, it'll bring up your destination or where you're at automatically, or you can put any other one that you want to. Flight plan, if you have a flight plan in, it'll give you your flight plan, where you're going, and all that information. Here's your weather. It's waiting for data. It's not going to get it because I'm inside the hangar, and it's getting this from ADS-B. Uh, through the 345R transponder, so it's not there right now, but it will bring it up. And you can see it over here, radar or cloud tops or winds aloft. You can get all of this lightning. You can get all this information while you're flying uh, through the ADSBN. 
ADSBN weather is delayed maybe 10 or 15 minutes. This is the only thing. You can go pay a whole bunch of money to Sirius XM and get instant data through the satellite if you want to have that 10 or 15 minutes, uh, you know, if it's important to you. Uh, terrain, same thing here. You can have the train. It's showing my train. It's coloring it. Obviously, I'm on the ground in the hangar, so everything is in the red. But you can tell it what to make yellow, what to make red, and when to advise you of it, when not to. TRF is traffic, so this is giving me my traffic from ADSBB. This tells me when when it's working and what, whether the ground facilities are receiving or not, and sending it back to me. And then I can change the scale with this dial. So see, I can make it a two as two miles in the first ring, or I can go into one mile in the first ring, half a mile in the first ring. So you can dial out if you want to. You can set the parameters. How far out away do you want to first be warned about? somebody coming or you don't want to be warned when they're way out here 20 miles out but if the computer's calculating all the trajectories and what's going on you can say within two miles or something give me a warning if it looks like we're within 500 feet or whatever you want to do and right now you see it's set to two minute target trend so i've got it set so if we're anybody that looks like within two minutes might have a possible collision course with me it's going to warn me both through the earphones headphones and it'll do it visually on here with a lot of different warnings. It'll even come up and put a big ball, even if you're just on the map screen, it'll put a big orange ball up and then a white, and it'll grow bigger and bigger, and it'll say it, tell it to you, and it'll point to it, it's to your right. So XFXM right here, Sirius Satellite. You can go into your channels. These are my fa favorites, the Garth Channel, Prime, Prime Country, Fox Business. I mean, you can go put those in there, Margaritaville. Or you can just go up here and listen to all of them anyway. And you can set your volume through here, which you can also, again, still adjust through your audio panel. Or you can just mute it if you want to. So that's Sirius XM. Uh, they got different programs. But when you get to Sirius XM, just don't tell them it's for an airplane. Just tell them it's for a vehicle. And just like a car, which it is. And it'll just a normal rate, like if you had a car. And I think of like the highest plan is like... 15 or 16 bucks a month or something and you can then also listen to it on your phone or at home or whatever so if that interests you that's that info will be satellite information you can see it's downgraded because obviously i'm in the hangar and these are all the satellites and all that jazz on the ends the engine instruments that's here which we can get another way uh, anyway fuel calculator yeah, that's actually it's kind of cool when you're flying along. It's calculating your miles per gallon and the economy and your range and all that kind of stuff based on what currently has done, the fuel remaining, and the fuel that you've used, you know, so far. I don't use this very often because I usually use it through this menu here. So, in any case, we can just take it and go back over to the main map here. Now, if I'm in the main map or any other one of this up here, press the menu button. You see, now we're back into some of that configuration stuff. So you can go here on the fly while you're flying along, and you can change, you know, what type of map do you want? Uh, do you want the train to show, or you want topo shading, weather, you know, do you want weather on the map, animated weather on the map, traffic, just you know, set up your map, all kinds of things uh, that you can do with the, with the, when you hit that menu button. If you hit the menu button again, it takes you back, back to a main configuration, okay? So the first press kind of gives you something relevant to the window you're in. If you do it the second time, it takes you back just to another main configuration menu. It has more options here that you can do to things. And still, it's not ever going to let you change anything that's going to screw you up while you're flying, okay? It's just little things of preferences. So feel free to go in here and play with them while you're flying and know that you're not going to mess yourself up. Uh, while you're in the air but you know flight controls I mean you can press that you can see uh, autopilot flight directors headings track I mean you can do all that kind of stuff um, comm radio transponder you know, things that I use kind of a bit is the flight log you know it logs all your flights this is my last uh, flight and then exactly how long it was one point to eight hours there what, what was it you can click on it and give you the information all the information about the specifics about the flight and even show you you know how you did it and how you got there but it's a good little log book ever so often i just take a picture of this screen and then when i get home i'll ever so often i'll fill out the my log book when i kind of up, update it so you go back uh flight plan list 
VNAV is kind of cool. Vertical navigation is what it'll do is it's over here on the autopilot VNAV and you can set the parameters in the in here and you can say 300 feet per minute. How fast do you want to go down? This is when you're when it will calculate at your ba current cruising altitude when it needs to start descending at whatever you put in there. So at 300 feet per minute, I've told it I want to go to 800 feet above the waypoint two miles before I get there. I don't use a thousand foot uh, altitude, a pattern altitude. Most of the time I just come on down. But this is basically saying when I'm, when I'm flying along autopilot, just hit the VNAV button that just says I want you to Follow the VNAV approach, basically, not approach, but, you know, it's going to navigate you to the waypoint you're going to. And I want you to come in at 300 feet per minute descent. I want you to get me at 800 feet above the waypoint altitude, which is this, the airport. That's going to be 800 feet above the airport. And I want you to have me there two miles out before you get there. Okay. So and then do you want the messages on or off? And then if you click on that while you're flying, it'll tell you how far do you have to go before it calculates it's going to start putting you in a descent. When it does, it'll give you a tone. It'll pop up here. It'll have all these little bars and stuff, and it'll show you that it's getting ready to, to, to go into the VNAV approach, and then it shows it going down. You follow these little magenta boxes. that will keep you within down to where you're going. Okay? So that's what the VNAV is, and it's over here. <clears throat> Go back here. Track log is kind of cool. It's what you probably saw on the map a minute ago. You can actually make a track and save it. So if you go in one way and you want to come back out the same way or follow the same path, you can. Uh, I go in here and go to the menu. If you want to get rid of it, go to the menu. It says clear the active track or save the active track or, or other stuff. So I say clear the active track. And I go, yeah, clear it. So now if I go back to the map, you won't see a little white track line going through there. There's a timer if you want to use it. Waypoints if you want to set your own waypoints up. There's the weight and balance information. So you can see right now uh, with the weight at 1628 uh, where we're sitting because it knows the fuel is at 44 gallons because I told it it was just a few minutes ago when I fueled it up. The pilot, I've got it 220 pounds. I just got back from Mexico, so that's probably right. Uh, Co-pilot, nothing. Baggage, nothing. Aft baggage, 15 pounds. So then with that, it's telling me my total weight, 1628. There's my center of gravity, and there it is in my envelope. So that was, again, based on what we had set up before. But I can go in there. If I want to change the, the pilot, you know, I can go back in there and change me to I'm only 210 today because I went on a diet after Mexico. So that goes and it'll change it. So you can just enter that on the fly through that one. Data link's not something we're probably going to use. Tools, setup, and backlight. So tools are things you're probably not going to use either. Video in. If you've got a VIRB camera, you can do it through here. But now everybody's going blow, Bluetooth. Screen cleaning. If you want to clean your screen, up here I always keep a little cubby hole. I always keep me a micro fleece cloth. Stick it up there in my cubby hole. But you know, you don't. If you don't want to mess stuff up, you just go over and say, "Click screen cleaning." It says, "Okay." It stops all the inputs. You can clean the screen. Say, "Okay, I'm done." Go back to normal. That's what that is. Um, setup. You can go back and do more things like the data bar. That's the bars at the top. What do you want to change up here? And it'll just say, "What do you want to put here? What do you want to put there? What do you want to put there?" And you can just change them on the fly if you want to. The same stuff. Display units, time, map, position airspace you know this thing will warn you if you tell it to that i want I, i've got it where it says warn me of every damn thing i'm too too lazy not to so you see it's going to warn me of all all these airspaces turn off the ones you don't want uh weather what kind of weather do you want automatic i got it on auto you can just say only you only use cirrus xm or use fizz b so it's automatically uh, Bluetooth, that's how you can connect, you know, your Bluetooth. You can Bluetooth anything from there to your phone or iPad uh, with Garmin Pilot. I think also with Dynon's, uh, uh, Dynon's too. PFD, how do you want to configure it, transponder, angle of attack. These are stuff, angle of attack and stuff for things that you're going to have to calibrate. Uh, if you, you know, or whoever builds the airplane, there's things you actually have to go up and fly and do that. So this is the area that you do that. You're telling it. You're telling it what airspeed do you want it to show up on the 
map and see it won't show up until you're at a slow enough speed because you don't want that up there all the time. Uh, anyway, you'll go through the thing of doing that. Um, autopilot, this is again where you can go in, like I said, while you're flying along, you go like, I'm tired of this thick bumping me, my leg is too aggressive. Just go in here then on the roll and change the gain. So it's hitting you in the leg too much, go in here and just say, oh, I want it at 1.0 and say enter, now it's at 1.0. I like it at 1.5 if it's too lazy. So if it's too lazy, up the game. If it's too slow, go the other way. Same thing with the pitch over there, okay? And I think that's about you know, the, the main things. But you can see how it works anyway. Back button always just goes you back to the previous menu. Always then ends up back at the map, okay? If you press, if you go back over to the main thing here, you can go to the, where your engines were. That's always going to give you, if I go to a different menu, you can see here it's always going to give you the main stuff that you need in a glance. Uh, you'll have the, your, uh, it'll have you one temperature, but it'll show all four right here, but it'll have your oil pressure, oil temperature, fuel pressure, but you click it, it opens up over here. So over here, then again, it's going to show you your CHTs and your EGTs over here, all four cylinders, very the EGTs here, EGTs numbers mean nothing. Uh, just ignore, you, you can't say, I want to run my airplane at 1500 EGTs. That's not correct. EGT number is irrelevant. It's the, the EGTs, what makes the difference is how they change. CHTs are what makes a difference. That's what you want to watch and be careful of. These engines on the 363s, there's two different versions. One says 450 is maximum. Another one in, that they make says 500. So in any case, they can go much higher than most people uh, think they can. Uh, like 425 is the most that you really want to probably get them to, you know, consistently, you want know, a short time in a climb or when you're breaking them in, the engine in, that's not a big deal. Um, uh, Lena Cruz, lean assist running Lena peak is, is an issue that a lot of people talk about. I recommend reading Mike Bush's, uh, savvy aviations papers on those. I think he's right on and I, I go by them and do it all the time. But the lane assist is a pretty cool thing. You can hit lane assist. You only do this after your engine's uh, well broken into because you want to run it hard and rich while you're breaking the engine in, engines in, which, you know, 50, 60 hours. Then start playing with lane of peak. But lane of peak, you can press this. If you press lane of peak, you see it lights up green. It'll start doing different things. You see, here it says lean and then EGTs. As you're going along, you got full rich. You start to pull the mixture back. And as you pull the mixture back, just slowly give it a, pull it back one notch and then give it, you know, 10, 15 seconds and pull it back another notch. You'll see as you pull it back a notch, the EGTs will continue to climb. Lagging behind that, you'll see CHTs will begin to climb. Uh, all we're looking for here is, we're, is it's going to go up and it'll continue to go as the more you lean it, the hot, hotter the e, the higher the EGTs are going to get, and the higher the CHTs are going to get. Okay, if you continue, all of a sudden you're going to see a point where the EGTs, the um, column for the display, will be green as they go up. Once they hit the peak and start to come down as you're leaning, now they'll turn blue. So that column will turn blue. When you see the first column bl turn blue, that means that's your leanest cylinder right now. So go ahead and, and base everything that you do off of that cylinder. Then you just continue leaning. Uh, you just keep leaning and you can lean it back all 30 to 50 degrees lean of peak. So you'll watch your fuel flow then. When you're doing this, you'll watch your fuel flow over here, gallons per hour. And you'll see as you lean it, you know, the gallons per hour start coming down. When you go lean a peak, you know, obviously the fuel flow will continue to go down, but you'll see some little triangles right here. Uh, and the triangle will show you a blue triangle and then it'll show you a yellow triangle. The yellow triangle will show you what, what was the fuel flow when you peaked? And you continue leaning and so the blue triangle pointing here is showing you where you're at now. And if it's blue, it's showing you that you're running lean a peak. Okay, so that's lane of peak. And if you go the other way, it'll go above, you know, or a higher gallons per hour. So if you're running rich of peak, you know, if you go up to where it, the first cylinder goes up 
and it turns blue, if you then start enriching it again and bringing it back, then and it'll start coming back down, then you're running rich of peak. And you'll watch your CHTs. Your CHTs, okay, when you run, as you're running it up higher and higher, basically, usually the peak power is going to be right at Lena Peak, okay? That's usually your most power in your engines. But as you continue to lean, keep pulling it back and leaning, as you come back, then you'll see that the, that the EGTs will drop, but also you'll start seeing the CHTs drop, okay? And in a few, these fuel injected engines, this is my fourth. Uh, this is my third EX3. I'm finishing my fourth EX3. I had one EX2. Uh, the EX2 carburetor just, it was very hard to run Lena Peak because it wanted to run rough first. These fuel injected engines, these 363s are fantastic. So you can just run them right on back Lena Peak. They run just, just fine. So uh, that you're going to see, for example, I could run 10 and a half gallons uh, fuel per hour and be running just rich a peak or I can lean the peak it and come back to about seven and a half and be doing the same thing. So, and it's better on the engine. It'll run a lot cooler. If I'm running 10 and a half gallons rich a peak, then I'm, then I'm going to be running CHTs around, you know, 395, 400. If I bring it on back to seven and a half, I'm going to be running, you know, 365, 380, you know, you know, somewhere in there with the CHTs laying the peak. So really you can kind of control your CHTs then with your fuel. If it's running hot, you lean it more. Okay, less gas is going to make it. And you'll see it. Just lean it back and watch it. You can't hurt an engine by running it lean. Okay, I don't care what anybody says. You hear people talking about, oh, you're going to cause it to detonate. No, you're not. They don't understand what detonation is. If they're trying to tell you you're going to make your engine run uh, detonate by, by running it lean, that's absolutely false. All it will do is quit <laughs> at, at the worst. But it will, if you keep leaning, just bring it on back and keep leaning it like you would a carbureted one until it starts running rough. It'll just start kind of getting a little rough and not as smooth and then just go back in, which is the way you would do it with a carbureted engine. But with these, you can, these run great. So just bring it back and then I control the fuel flow with my CHT. So if you want to run it at 380, for example, just change the mixture. Give it a little, if you're still running cool 360, then lean it a little bit more, you know, I mean, or give it a little bit more, get more fuel and take it up to 380, you know, if you want to. So that's basically the lean to peak assist right there. And we talked about the fuel calc. Now, this is something that you do and it's pretty cool. When I build an airplane and I first put in the, put it in, I measure all the fuel that goes into the tanks and see exactly how much fuel they actually hold as opposed to the 44 gallons are supposed to hold. I also measure to see what the real usable fuel is in a flight level flight condition. Um, 44 gallons is the way this is set. So as you're again, as you're flying along in the air, if you go to this page, it'll tell you your endurance, your no wind range, how far you can go and what's the economy, how many miles per gallon how much fuel you've used as of right now. This is how you reset it. So if you want to reset it to whenever you refuel, you just hit that and it puts it back in this one. I just refueled a little bit ago. I had 44 gallons on it. So I used a 10th of a gallon, bringing it back to the hangar. So I'm right now, I've got 43.9 remaining. And you can see I've used 0 0.1 gallons. Now you can, what I do, the first few tanks of fuel that I burn through a, an airplane, then I actually, I keep, I fill it to the very, very brim, making sure it's full, full, full. And, uh, and then I, I write it all down. How, what did I, then I want to refill it. I look exactly how much fuel did it take to refill it. Then I look and see what this said and I make sure they're the same. So the amount, it says, it says if I use this much fuel, so it says I use 10 gallons and I put 10 gallons in it, good. If it says I put 11 gallons in it, that's not good, okay? But I'll do it over a period of three or four different times, and I do it at a place where I know that it has a calibrated fuel uh, dispenser, so I know it's actually measuring it correctly, too. But if you find that it's off a little bit, you can go to the and do a calculation, and you can go into the configuration. You can change that back on that main configuration menu. You can change... Well, they call it the K factor, I think, which is how it divides the number of spins. It's a little, it's a little thing that spins that the fuel runs through a little, the little red cube that's right above the fuel 
uh, servo injector uh, servo in in the in the airplane. So anyway, you can you can recalibrate that if you find it's just consistently not matching what you've got on here. If this is not matching what you're putting in the plane, then you can change it. Uh, so what's cool is when you stop, like I said, you can get some fuel or every time you refuel, if you leave your IBBS switch on, then every time you refuel and fill it up, then you just click that and it'll put 44 gallons in here. And then if you want to reset it, like how much if I use right now, you know, or you don't want to keep track of it over a whole trip. You just want to do it from tank to tank. Then just hit reset. It puts it back to zero. So this will log how much you've used. And this is the fuel over destination. And this is fuel remaining. Uh, so you can do you can do it that way, um, and I just get in the habit of every time I when I park the plane and get ready to refuel it, I shut everything down, but I leave the IBBS off, and as soon as I get through doing the fueling, then I come back in here. You can't actually add gallons if you didn't want didn't fuel it. You only wanted to put ten more gallons in it. You can go in here and say just add me ten gallons or five gallons or whatever you know to that. So um, what else? I think that probably covers that part of it. The autopilot is, is over here and it's pretty, the, the, the blue button which we talk about was, is right here. And again, what's kind of cool about that, if, if anything comes up, uh, I think I flew with Brad Dam one time at Cub Crafters years ago and he said, well, some people think that blue button's kind of silly, who needs a blue button? He said, I got in there one time, there was a wasp in there just right after I took off. He said, man, I said, I pushed the blue button and took care of the wasp, <laughs> you know. So the blue button will just take you and hold you uh, level, attitude, and altitude if you need to. Just from like you're flying along, you just want to stop for a minute, just hit the blue button. I use the autopilot all the time, okay. So one of the things that you do if you want to use the autopilot is first you just press the autopilot button. You heard it click. Okay, and the light came on, and also the fuel flight director came on, which was these bars right here. It tells you where your how how what your attitude is versus what the magenta lines say you should be doing. Okay, so now I've got this the autopilot is on, but what is it following? Okay, so I, I say I want it to follow a heading. What I want to get in the habit of doing is that is the heading bug is down here, but it may be over here. So I just always get in the habit of first pressing this button in. If you do that. You see the bug move over? It'll move the heading bug always to your current heading. So when you go, when you hit this button, instead of thinking it needs to go over there immediately and turning, it thinks straight ahead is where you want to go. So I just hit that, then hit heading. Now the heading is on, that means it's going to follow the heading bug. Okay. So if you just want to move a little to the left, you can just rotate it. And it's kind of cool. Watch the map. See the map? I don't know the direction I'm in because the GPS isn't working in the hangar. But you see that line? It'll show you when you move your heading here and the heading bug here. It'll show you on the map where that's going to take you. Okay, or you can recenter it. Watch the heading bug. Boom, it moved over the blue bug. Okay, if you're navigating, okay, you've got a navigation. You're, you're going somewhere. You, you Instead, you would do navigate. And when you do navigate, and it's not going to do it, see, because I don't have anything in here right now. Navigate. So that's so navigate will do it, and then there's you just have to go study up on on doing that. And one of the easiest ways, if you're just going somewhere, is to, instead of even following a flight, I mean doing a flight plan through here, just hit the direct button. It'll say, "What do you want to go direct to? A waypoint? You can go in here and type one in and look one up, or you can go to a flight plan you've got, or you can go nearest airport or recent." So if I want to go to back down to Denton Enterprise, I can, which one of the last ones I went, it's 201.4 miles from here, 204 degrees. I can click that. You see, it brings up all the information about it. I go, yep, that's it. And I can say, activate it. Boom. Now it sort of puts it on the map. It puts it in the flight plan and it puts it, you know, into here. Now you see it went to the navigate. It showed it on here. It will actually fly the airplane there. Okay. And there's all kinds of things you can do. You know, to you can graphically edit that. You can put multiple points on. You can use Garmin Pilot at home on your iPad or on your phone and draw your way around TFRs or mountains or whatever and say waypoint there, go to there, go to there, go to there, and, and uh, so forth. There you can say it's saying trim down. And when the servos sense that it needs, it's not, it's not happening with what it's got, it wants you to put a little trim down. Again, I ignore those most of the time. 
Uh, I've trimmed the plane to fly level, and if, if I get a little up or down draft, it's going to say that. I'm not going to chase it. Just give it a, a minute or two, and then it'll probably change and come back the other way. So anyway, if you want to, you can. You can chase it and give it a little tr trim down if you want or up, whatever. Okay. Now, for altitude, <clears throat> here's where your altitude is going to be. Right now, we have nothing in for altitude. Up here is telling us the autopilot is on. It's following a GPS, and we're going to go altitude boom and if i hit altitude it's going to be the current altitude you see it put it in there where i'm at right now i put 600 feet so just pressing altitude is going to do that but now you can take this little button which is kind of fun and you watch here if i want to go to 3000 just turn that and you see there you see it's showing you i want to go to, i just change it to 3000 feet So there's 3,000. My my stick just took off to go over there because <laughs> that's my autopilot's on. Okay. And then how do you want to get there, though? We're at 600. How do you want to get to that 3,000? I want to go vertical speed or indicated airspeed. Okay. Indicated airspeed, you say, take me there at 90 miles an hour. Okay. Or you can say, take me by vertical speed. That's what I usually do. So I'll hit vertical speed. Then you'll look over here and you'll see the little triangle. Whoops little triangle in here then i can go nose up or nose down see it the blue bug going up so i'm saying right right there be 500 feet per minute see i did that just by rotating and clicking this 500 feet per minute and then that's what it's going to do it's going to climb at 500 feet per minute until it gets to 3,000 feet and then it's going to level off give you a warning and it's going to maintain 3,000 feet okay same thing with lowering if you want to change it just change change it with the dial go down to there how do you want to do it? Vertical speed. Now you change the bug to go down. Once you go down at 200 feet per minute. So, and then you want to get rid of the autopilot. You can click it off or you can just simply do the disconnect. You'll hear it click. Okay. If you had a headset on, you'd hear it giving you a warning that you had disconnected, connected it. Okay. And there's a lot more stuff. Obviously there's a 500 page manual. You can go online and read and uh, give you a lot more of the details but that, uh, I think that gives you the, the gist and gets you started anyway and lets you see how some of it works. See ya.